the Lord, dear children. It's another day that God has given us to come and hear his word. I hope you are home, seated with your pen, your notebook, and your Bible. But before we can do anything else, let us put our hands together and let us pray. So put our hands together, close our eyes, bow our heads, and let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that you have gathered us together to hear your word. We pray, dear Lord, that you're going to open our hearts and even our minds to be able to receive from you. Send your Holy Spirit to be in our midst. For this is our humble prayer. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. And everybody shout, Amen. I hope you children have said an Amen at home. But before we can start our service today, I have a song that I know all of you know. And I want us to sing it together. It's called, it talks about faith. Faith is believing what God says he will do. So this is how my song goes. Faith is just believing what God says he will do. He will never fail us. His promises are true. If you but receive him, his children we become. Faith is just believing this wondrous thing is done. Indeed, faith is believing what God says he will do. Remember, dear children, last week from our story, we talked about four men who are helped by God to be able to get wisdom and understanding, and they were able to tell a king of his dream. Can you remember the name of that king, dear children? Anyone? Are you there? Yes. His name was King Nebuchadnezzar. But let me ask you, dear children, have you ever been forced to do something that is wrong? Or have you ever been forced to, to think or to say something that is wrong? Many a times, we are forced by circumstances to do what is wrong, even though we know that it is not right in the eyes of God. And today we want to talk about three friends of Daniel who are also in the same situation. They were told to do something that was wrong, yet they knew it was wrong, and they don't know whether they decided to do it or they did not decide to do it. Let us hear from the Bible. You know what, dear children? This king was called King Nebuchadnezzar. He had conquered so many cities and countries around him. And you know, he was such a powerful person. He was a great person. And he wanted the other countries, including the Jewish country, to know how powerful he was and that he wanted them to honor him. And so what did he do? He wanted everyone to believe in him and everyone to worship or just be able to to do whatever he says and so the king decided to make a big statue statue is just like a, a doll and you see he made a big statue and the bible says that the statue was 90 feet high that was so high i believe those who have gone to kicc it is taller than kicc and you know what it was a big wide it was nine feet wide and so it was all gold it was coated with gold and why did he make this statue he wanted everyone to worship this statue and you know what he did he put it on a plane yani a land that did not have trees that did not have it only had grass and so the pot, the statue was able to be seen from a very 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 far place and other countries if they looked towards his country babylon they were able to see it so he called all the people who were big in his country the politicians of his country the magicians and all the people who are there he called them and he made a command and this is the command that king Nebuchadnezzar made 
from our Bible, the Bible says that King Nebuchadnezzar made a decree and said, nations and people of every language, this is what you are commanded to do. As soon as you hear the sound of music, you must fall down and worship the image of God that Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And among those people that were given that command were three friends of Daniel called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And you know what? They knew that was wrong. They could not bow to a god or a statue because they did not believe in the gods of Babylon. They believed in the one true God. Dear children, do you believe in the one true living God? The one true living God is the one who created you and me. He made you and me. And he made us because he loved us so much. And by his love, he did something else. He took away the punishment for our sins. And how did he do that? He came as a child, came from heaven, and he came on earth. And very evil people killed him at the cross. And what happened at the cross is that he bled and he died on the cross. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah 53 and verse 6a, this is what the Bible says. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own ways. That is what God says. We have done things our way and not God's way. And that makes God sad and that call, God calls it sin. And because we have strayed away and did things our own way, God says sin must be punished. And what is the punishment for sin, dear children? It's total separation from God forever. And God did not want us to be separated from him to get, uh, forever. And so what did he do? He sent his son Jesus Christ, he came and died on the cross, and he bled. And Hebrews 9.22 says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. And so he shed his blood so that our, our sins could be forgiven. He did not stay at the cross. He was buried, and after three days, he rose from the dead and now lives in heaven, ruling as king and savior. And you know what? The three people believed, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, believed in the one true God. Do you believe in the one true God? God wants you to believe in him. And so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew that the true one true God was the only one to be followed. And he could not, they could not bow down to any statue. And so the messenger of the king made furthermore decree. And this is what he said. And if anyone, whoever does not fall down and worship, he will immediately be thrown into the blazing furnace. Wow, dear children, do you know what a blazing furnace is? It is a, a hot fire. It was going to be a hot fire where you are thrown in and you will be burnt completely. And you see these people were not shaken even when the decree was made. The king commanded that the trumpet be blown. And when everyone had the trumpet being blown, all of them fell on their knees and bow at the golden statue. But you know what, dear children? These three people, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, did not bow down to worship the statue. And so this made the king very angry. And so the politicians and the scribes who were there ran to the king and told the king, King, do you know what? There are some people who have refused to bow down to your command. They have refused to bow down to the golden statue. And the king was so mad and the king was so angry. He was so angry. But these people stayed put and said they were not going to worship that golden statue that the king had already made. And what did he say? They said that even though 
We know you, King, is a powerful person. We will not bow down to any statue that has been made by human hands. And you know what, dear children? The king gave them another opportunity to see whether they were going to be able to bow down to the king. And so the king said, another trumpet will be blown. And when the trumpet is blown, everyone needs to bow down to that golden statue. And you know what, dear children? The trumpet was blown. Can we all blow the trumpet? And you know, everyone, everyone fell down and worshipped the statue. And these three people still stood up and said they were not going to believe. They are not going to bow down to the king. Do you know what, dear children? If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you can trust God to be your deliverer. Many times, sometimes, we are persecuted because of our faith, because of what you believe in. You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but your friends mock you, and some, sometimes they make fun of you, and you feel intimidated because they do not believe in the same God as you believe in. Do not be afraid. God says he is your deliverer. And in our memory verse today, we have it in the board here. I have written it. Ephesians 6, 10. It says, can we read it all together? Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. What is the book Bible telling us? The Bible is telling us that we need to be strong in the Lord. It doesn't matter what happens in our lives. When the Bible says, finally, brethren, brethren means the people who have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he says, those who have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, please be strong in the Lord. Trust in the Lord completely. It doesn't matter what happens. Sometimes your parents will mock you because you have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Do not be worried. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The Bible says, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you can expect that in times of trouble, he will be there to deliver you from all that you're going through. And so the king was so furious furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because they denied, they trusted in God, and so they denied to bow down to this statue because they knew it was going to make God sad. So even though they disobeyed the king, the king was so angry, very, very, very angry, and the king said, put, up, put on a lot of wood so that that fire can be so hot and that is exactly what the people did. And he told his soldiers, come, tie these people and throw them in the fairy furnace. And let me tell you, dear children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were tied and they were thrown into the fairy furnace. But there is something that happened in the fairy furnace. As they were being thrown because the fairy furnace was so hot, it was very, very, very hot, something happened. The soldiers that were throwing them into the fairy furnace, each one of them was burnt and all of them died because the fire was so hot. Each time they moved nearer to the door of the fairy furnace, one of them fell and died and they were completely burnt. And you know what, dear children? Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego were thrown into the fairy furnace and they did not burn. So they kept on praising and walking inside the fairy furnace. So after some time, the king went to look whether they have completely been burnt down. And you know what? They were standing at the fairy furnace and they were talking and praising God in the fairy furnace. To their surprise, there was somebody else who was there in the fairy furnace, a fourth Person. Do you know what, who this person was? Maybe it was Jesus Christ who came to protect them in the fairy furnace. Or maybe it was an angel who was sent by God to come and protect them from the fairy furnace. And the king wondered, what is happening here? Didn't we throw three people into the fairy furnace? 
And the king, everybody said, yes, there were three. But I can see four people. Who is the fourth person? They were unable to find out who the fourth person was. And you know what? The king called Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, come out of the fairy furnace. And all of them came out of the fairy furnace without any burn on their body, without anything that showed that they were in a fire. Only three people came out of the fairy furnace. The other fourth person did not come out. So, dear children, who was this fourth person in the fairy furnace? This fourth person was the angel of the Lord or maybe Jesus Christ who came to protect his children. Do you know, dear children, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, even though things might become very tough and you have completely tra complete trust in the Lord, the Lord says he will deliver you and say, God is my deliverer. Everyone shout, God is my deliverer. God is going to deliver you and to help you even in the midst of the things that are happening. And you know, dear children, sometimes even our friends, maybe our church members, do not even believe you because you have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Be strong in the Lord Jesus Christ and in the power that he is able to do mighty things in your life. And so our memory verse reminds us, Ephesians 6 10. Can you say the memory verse together, all of us from the screen? It is there on our screen, dear children. Are you seeing it? Yes. So let us read the memory verse together. Ephesians 6, 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Ephesians 6, 10. Can you say it one more time, dear children? Ephesians 6, 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Ephesians 6, 10. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you can believe that God is going to fight your battles, even though they may become so fierce. And maybe you have been put in a tempt tempting situation. Maybe you are told to mock your God. Maybe you are told you are, you are talked badly about because you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you can trust God to be deliver you from that. Trust God, your deliverer, to help you stand firm for him. The three people who stood firm and strong for God, God delivered them from the fairy furnace. And the king said, ah, the only God to be worshipped is the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Why? Because he looked at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and their clothes were perfectly clean. There was no spot of fire that caught their clothes or their body. In fact, they say that even the smell of burning charcoal was not found in their clothes. Let me tell you, dear children, God is calling you to believe and to put your trust in him. So the king declared, the greatest God is the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and no other God needs to be worshipped but the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So this week, as you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you can trust God that God will fight your battles. The Bible says that finally, brethren, in Ephesians 6.10, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Ephesians 6.10, be strong. Believe God that he's going to work through his power to deliver you from whatever is going through around you. God is going to deliver you. But if you are there, and you have never believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. What is the Lord saying? The Lord is saying that he is calling upon you because he cannot be your deliverer if you have not believed in him. John 1, 12. 
yet to all who received him to all who believed in him he gave them the right to become children of god yet means all who believed in him and all who received what is to believe to believe in him is to put your trust complete trust in god to receive him is to accept that you have done things that are not right and you're telling god god come into my life and forgive me these things that I have done so that I can become your child. So dear children, let us close our eyes and bow our heads. Say this prayer with me. Dear Lord, I know I am a sinner. I have done many things against your will. I have walked on my own ways and not your way. I pray, dear Lord, that you may forgive me. Cleanse me from all my sins and make me your child this day. In Jesus' name, amen. If you say that prayer with me, you have now become the child of God. And God wants you to believe, to put your trust in him, to trust him that he will be your deliverer. He will come to be able to fight the battles for you and he will always be there with you to fight your battle and to give you wisdom on how to deal with the situations in your life remember when you are delivered god is going to get all the glory and god is going to replenish your faith in him and he will make you believe in him more and more thank you dear children we have talked about Daniel and his three friends. And next week, we will go on with the same series. Just wondering, just seeing how marvelous God has worked in the life of Daniel. We have come to the end of our Sunday school lesson. But before we can go away, I have a song here that talks about victory. Because when God delivers you, he gives you victory. Victory for you through his blood and through Jesus Christ. So this is how my song goes. There is victory for me. There is victory for me. Through the blood of Christ my Savior. There is victory for me. For me, yes me. For me, yes, me, through the blood of Christ my Savior, there is victory. So we can sing the song together, dear children. Aha, want to go? There is victory for me. There is victory for me. Through the blood of Christ my Savior, there is victory for me. For me, yes me, for me, yes me. Through the blood of Christ my Savior, there is victory. Victory! Yes, the Lord will give you victory when you believe and trust in him. As we come to the end of our lesson, please put our hands together. Close our eyes and let us thank God for his word. Thank you, dear Lord, for your word that says that you are our deliverer and we can trust in you. Our victory is our portion if we believe in you. Because we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and through his blood, you have become our savior. We pray, dear Lord, that you'll be able to fight our battles, even in the bitterest of confusion, in the bitterest of the things that are happening around us that we do not have control. When our friends mock us because we have believed in you, we can put our trust in you. Thank you, dear Lord, for your word that has come forth and help us to know that you are going to be with us even as we walk this journey of salvation. We thank you and we honor you. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, 
Amen. Thank you, dear children. This week, you can say, God is my deliverer. Until next Sunday, bye.